you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me. <laughs> so I am going to start with uh, some uh, standard things from uh, converse analysis which are very elementary. So I want to this is very basic. So let f be a function from Rd to R. Then the Lejeune transform of f is uh, f star from Rd. It may take the value plus infinity defined as f star of p is uh, the supremum over q in Rd, pq, b, minus f of v. So I uh, would like to write that because uh, from the definition, you see immediately that uh, if I write uh, f star of p plus uh, f of v, this will be greater than vp for every pv in Rd. Okay. So in particular, assume P naught, V naught are such that F of uh, P naught plus F star of uh, V naught equal to P naught V naught. Okay, so I am given P, I am defining uh, F star to be uh, a supremum over a certain V. And over a set, set of V in Rd, and I am saying uh, assume the supremum is a 10 because uh, this identity is equivalent to say that uh, the supremum, yes, thank you, the supremum is a 10. Then uh, I have uh, this is uh, 0, while this is saying that uh, this is uh, greater than or equal to 0. It tells me that uh, this function achieve its minimum at uh, s, at p naught, v naught. And so the partial derivative with respect to each variable will be 0. So the gradient with respect to v, p of uh, f star of uh, p plus f of v minus uh, v, p. This gradient at uh, v, p equal to v naught p naught will be 0. And uh, it will tell you that uh, v naught is uh, the gradient of f star at uh, p naught. And uh, p naught is the gradient of f at uh, v naught. So I thought uh, I want to do this quick uh, review because uh, it tells me immediately that this map is invertible. So if uh, I know that f and f star take only finite value, and I know that the class of C1, then I, I immediately get that they are inverse of each other. So now let me come back to mean field game. I am going to start with some notation. So you want to be able to study mean field game where the players are in Rd. But uh, you may encounter a serious difficulty because Rd is not a compact set. It may make uh, some of your computation uh, more technical. And so sometimes people look at what happens when uh, the player live on the torus. You, you get a compact set uh, 
without a boundary. So I will work on RFD, and from time to time, uh, the result uh, which I am going to mention will be known to hold only on the torus. They are not known to hold on RFD. So instead of uh, doing that, I am going to say that M is either the torus or RD. And uh, from time to time, when I don't specify anything, M is RD. And from time to time, I am going to specify that uh, it is a torus. I am going to assume that uh, data I am going to assume that I am given L and H, which are class C3 from M cross RD to R. And uh, this is uh, called the Lagrangian. I will refer to this as the Lagrangian. I will refer to that as uh, the Hamiltonian. And uh, I am going to impose the condition that uh, L for every Q, L is the Legend transform of uh, H, and uh, H is the Legend transform for every Q in uh, M. So you see, from the computation I see I done uh, there, <coughs> Because I am assuming that the function are differentiable, the gradient with respect to H will be the inverse of the gradient with respect to L and uh, vice versa. Another thing which I would like to fix, I will assume that I am given F and G. These are defined from uh, M cross the set of probability measure on M of finite second moment. And for the moment, I am not going to put any assumption on uh, F and G. I want to say later that they are twice differentiable. But uh, first, I need to tell you about the differential structure on the set of uh, probability measure before we talk about uh, twice differentiability. So what is P2? Let me write a PP or PR of Rd. This is uh, the set of new Borel measure on Rd, such that the integral over Rd of uh, Q to the power R mu dQ is less than plus infinity. So the moment of order R is uh, finite. Probability, Borel probability. Thank you. <coughs> so I am going to state uh, a variational problem. Assume I am given parameters. I call them parameters, but uh, later they will become variable. I am going to give myself a t greater than 0. And this will represent the terminal time. This means that I want to play a game between time 0 and time capital T. And uh, f is referred to as a running cost. as uh, G will be, we play the role of the terminal. Course. Sorry, initial course.
And uh, I am going to assume that uh, I have a x bar 1, x bar n. The position of uh, n players, so si will be the position of player s bar i is uh, the position of player i at time t, at the terminal time. So this will be taken as uh, an uh, element uh, of uh, Rd. So assume I am given setup. Assume I am given y1 to yn from 0t to rd. So I am given a path which describes a group of players. For player i, given the, vo the evolution of this player, so here is uh, uh, what I am trying to describe. When you know uh, the trajectory of a group of players, you are going to minimize the cost. And uh, when you minimize the cost, you want the result uh, you get to coincide with, with what is given to you. So this is a fixed point problem. So here, what I am trying to describe, I am trying to, uh, to start with y1 to yn. And so I am going to study a variational problem which is going to produce path, path S1 to Sn. And later, my fixed point problem will be, I would like to choose Y such that at the end, S and Y coincide. So for player I, I am going to look at the action. We consider the cost. which is the integral from 0 to t, L of uh, S i, S dot i, minus F of uh, S i, 1 over n minus 1, the sum j is not i, delta y j dt plus g of uh, plus g of uh, s i at time zero, one over n minus one the sum j from j is not i, delta yj at time 0. And uh, I will call this uh, the action of uh, player i when he chose this path. And I'm going to impose that uh, si of t. I am going to impose that uh, Si at time t is uh, the given position S bar i. OK, so I am going to emphasize that uh, twice, but let me emphasize it from the finite uh, dimensional point of view. Mean field game will be much easier if uh, here we were allowed to replace this by 1 over n, the sum j from 1 to n, delta yj. If we were not uh, forced to exclude uh, this. And uh, so to convince you that uh, uh, this, this is a serious difficulty, 
when you have a game with infinite many players, when you replace this by a measure, and this measure is non-atomic, meaning I put a measure here such that the measure of each point is zero. This is uh, the only situation where we know how to prove the existence of Nash equilibrium. And why? Because uh, when we have a full measure here, there is a problem we know how to solve. But when we modify it, we don't know how to solve the modified problem. So you study a problem which is not necessarily a mean field game problem. And then you check that uh, when you are dealing with a, a non-atomic measure, it coincides with a mean field game. And that is what uh, produces a solution. So if I replace this by, uh, by 1 over n, the sum uh, j from 1 to n delta yj, in the case of potential game, I will just define an action which depends on all the variables and minimize the action. And the minimum I will get will give me the Nash equilibrium I am looking for. However, here, the fact that uh, I need uh, to remove this uh, um, delta yi from here, it means that I need to consider n value function, not one value function. And uh, we don't know how to deal with such a system. And in fact, uh, uh, Tambin uh, Amidu told me that he has a counterexample for existence of uh, Nash equilibrium. If so people believe, uh, it is believed in the community that when you have a game with n player, the search of Nash equilibrium, one should not expect uh, a Nash equilibrium to exist. And uh, he told me that he can produce a counterexample. So later, later I want to ask. I, so um, everybody choose a strategy. Ex I am a player. Everybody here choose a strategy. Once they choose a strategy, I am going to minimize my cost. Okay. When I minimize my cost, you are going to react. Mm -hmm. You are going to change your strategy, and I will keep minimizing my cost. So we are looking for a situation where, when you choose your strategy and I minimize my cost. This is uh, what is uh, best for everybody in the sense that anybody who changes his mind is going to pay a higher cost. Yes? So this technical issue, is it mostly about going from the particle to the continuum? Because sometimes when people present it, they just skip straight ahead to So, so I, I will say that uh, this is one of the, the issues, but people may skip directly to the continuum because uh, I'll be describing something which probably doesn't have a solution. Okay. Right? So I'll write, be writing it in the discrete setting, right? In the discrete setting, I will make a description and probably I don't have a solution. So people don't want to work on that. However, there will be a huge difference, which I'm going to mention uh, later. If I make this stochastic, then suddenly you have uh, existence of uh, a Nash equilibrium. Yes. So I am going to define given y1, yn, assume 
we can get SI minimizing A I of uh, SI under the condition SI of T equal to S by I. So assume I can do that for player one, I can do that for player two, and so on. So I need that to impose some, I need to impose some condition. If I impose some growth condition, for instance, this problem will have a minimizer. But I am skipping the assumption because later I'll be more specific when I'm studying a more general game. So assume that uh, we have a, a way of selecting a minimizer here. And uh, call O the operator. y goes to O of y equal to x. So I am going to define S uh, as uh, O of y. Definition. We have a Nash equilibrium. If there exists S1, Sn, from 0t to Rv, such that O of x equal to x. So, this problem is, uh, as, 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 I, as I said, uh, in fact, uh, one of the pioneers, there are two pioneers of the uh, main field uh, gamer. Well, if we go back to the 60, Oman and Chapley. So I didn't realize Chapley was uh, here until uh, I came uh, here. And uh, when I arrived, I went to a conference and someone told me, oh, Chapley is in your department. So I decided I'm going to send him an email. And I was thinking, if he doesn't respond, I'll be really mad. <laughs> so I went to check, and then I realized he passed away. So in fact, Omen said that it is very paradoxical that uh, people consider a game with finitely many players and expect a Nash equilibrium. So he does not think that uh, this is uh, a good problem in the deterministic case. So now, how we go to the stochastic case? In fact, uh, I wrote S dot here, but this is uh, a control. I am going to replace S dot, so conjecture, one can construct. Count example. of finite game. With no Nash equilibrium. So now let us move to stochastic. So maybe before I move to stochastic, there is uh, something else I want to 
something I want to do to convince you uh, why this is a, a serious problem. So it is a, a well-known fact. If you give me a Lagrangian L of uh, S1, Sn, V1, Vn, and I minimize the integral from 0 to t of uh, L of uh, S1, Sn, S dot 1, S dot n. This value function plus uh, uh, the initial condition, this value function satisfies Hamilton-Jacobi equation. So I am not going to uh, describe uh, that. I will just say this is uh, known for a long time in uh, optimal control. And so, remark. Assume we have a Nash equilibrium. Set ui of t s bar equal to. So for each uh, one of the data, s bar and t fix, assume I can find uh, a Nash equilibrium and set it to be the minimum, which we know will exist, ai si. Okay. So I am going to use si with, uh, with y i equal to si. Because since we have a Nash equilibrium, here it tells us that uh, we have a y i equal to si. Then u will be a viscosity solution of the following equation. The gradient the der derivative with respect to capital T of ui of capital T s bar. So here I am putting s1 to sn plus the Hamiltonian. I can get the Hamiltonian here. So here is my Lagrangian. My whole Lagrangian is here my Hamiltonian will be this plus that instead of negative. Plus uh, H of uh, Si, 1 over N minus 1. The sum J is not I, delta Sj. You mean F is missing? But didn't you take uh, the whole language to be R minus F? Yeah, it should be. Yes, so I should add F. Yeah, I didn't understand you meant I was too slow. I was going to write F. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 So I am slow. <laughs> S i. Let me just remove the bar. U of uh, t x u i plus f of uh, S i 1 over n minus 1 with some j is not i delta s k equal to zero. So this is uh, a system of Hamilton-Jacobi equation. And uh, Wait, give me the y capital T. Isn't true for all T? Yes. So well, do you have like a mixed term yeah. like with all the derivatives with respect to the other variables? <laughs> Like UI differentiate with respect to XJ? No, because uh, that will uh, come only in the master equation. But 
Oh, oh, yes, yes. Yes, it will be the sum, the gradient with respect to S i, S j. U i of. Uh, so I will put a t here, because uh, I said at the beginning the time uh, is a parameter, but later I will let it vary. So I'll put little t here. Yeah. Yes, so here I will need x. And uh, I still need uh, here s i, right? Oh, yes. Gradient P, H, of uh, S, uh, I, J. OK, thank you. Gradient S, J. So the I is at the top. U of T, S, equal to 0. Some over j. You said it should be d so derivative. Oh yes, yes. yes. Okay. It's, it is there. Let me. Yes, it, it is in the front of the last term, because uh, yeah, 1 over n. Minus 1 over n. 1 over n minus 1. Equal to 0. So I know how to write it uh, in an abstract form in infinite dimension, but not in finite dimension. <laughs> So, so this should appear as an integral, right? Yeah. The integral with respect to the measure. Okay, so let's say to be revisited. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we write it in infinite dimension, we will just uh, plug the Dirac mass and see what is the correct <laughs> equation. People believe we yeah, cannot solve the counterexample. The, the, the counter example because you don't have, you don't get any kind of regularity. You cannot, you yes. cannot even say that it's an yes, yes, very. So you can uh, look for a solution in the sense of viscosity, yeah. and uh, what it is. Uh, what does that mean? Yes, it is. Uh, what it is a uh, known that. Uh, so this is a, a, a non-local equation. So in the definition of viscosity solution, which is known, it is only for scalar equation. And so I have a system here. So if you try to apply the viscosity solution to each one of the components, it will not be very meaningful. But for sure, you will not expect uh, this to have a smooth solution. In a stochastic case, you have a viscosity lurking someplace. Yes, that so. That would take care of the problem. Yes, I, I want to make that appear. I, I want to, in the stochastic case, I am going to soon add the Laplacian here. Okay. And the Laplacian will make uh, the system uniformly em elliptic, and immediately you will get. Uh, existence of solution. So as the viscosity goes to zero, that would be a viscosity solution. And the real world makes any sense. 
if you can define what it means to the viscosity so solution. Nice to that. I mean, that's hard to do, I guess. Ye yes. Sorry. Yeah, so I thought it was good to write this so that uh, we compare it uh, with the stochastic case. So in the stochastic case, I am going to replace SI stochastic choose epsilon beta positive and uh, I will put epsilon in front of uh, what we co be call uh, individual noise beta in front of what would be called common noise and I will justify the terminology I am using soon so assume, or let W1, W, N, B, B independent, B Brownian standard, Brownian motion. Starting at the origin and independent. So I am going to replace SI. S dot I by S I alpha I, where I impose that uh, wave I impose that uh, D S I equal to alpha D T plus square root of 2 epsilon dw i plus beta square root of 2 beta d b okay so if beta alpha epsilon equal to 0 the player are moving randomly but uh, someone there is someone which is detecting decided from, from them uh, the way they are moving randomly, and everybody is moving in the same random way. So if I cover this beta equal to 0, then uh, each player has uh, a random way of mo moving chosen from, uh, by him. And uh, when you have, uh, so this operator correspond to the indiv individual noise operator, and this operator corresponds to the common noise operator. So we will see later that uh, this will help you gain a little bit of regularity, and this will give you no regularity. Yes, thank you. Yes. So if I look at the, the distribution of the player associated to the SI, this will be, you will, you will make the convolution of the density by the heat kernel. And so this is going to give you some smoothness. And uh, here, what you are doing, you are just translating all the set uh, with uh, this Brownian motion. And I am going to write a, a specific formula later. However, we will see 
uh, later that uh, this expression has uh, a geometric meaning. It allows you to define a partial Laplacian. And this expression, I don't know any geometric meaning for it. So here is uh, the difference with uh, the previous case. So I am going to impose that uh, SI at time t equal to S bar i. Once you give me alpha i, I find x. And so this function, which I wrote as a function of uh, s, in the determinate case, it is equivalent to write it as a function of s or a function of s dot. But in the stochastic case, this is, in fact, a function of uh, alpha i. And here, I am going to put uh, alpha i. And uh, there, I am going to use the expectation. So you will define the Nash equilibrium the same way. This is going to modify your equation. Let me look at the case beta equal to 0. Plus. Epsilon. The Laplacian with respect to Si of uh, Ui of Tx if beta equal to 0. Yes. yes. So in, uh, like, like usual in Hamilton-Jacobi equation, you, you impose the initial value, yeah. then the optimal pass is... Uh, like yeah. yeah. This over i? Because you want to join before the same answer. Same? No, because I am taking the... Only the independent, the independent noise. Yes, I am leaving the common noise. So this fall in the category of uh, system of uh, parabolic uh, equation with a uh, uniformly elliptic uh, operator, and so you have an uh, existence uh, of solution when epsilon is uh, strictly greater than 0. He asks if you have uniqueness. I will be tempted to say, unless you put some assumption on uh, f uh, on f uh, and the initial condition, because you think about monotonicity. Monotonicity gives you uniqueness for the in the when um, the measure absolutely continues. I am not sure if you have uniqueness, but I will tend to say no. Because some people also mentioned that one of the difficulties on the finite level is because also so it may be possible that in, in the continuous case you have uniqueness, but still here you still don't have even uniqueness. So in the continuous case, when you have uniqueness, uh, there are two results which are known. You impose monotonicity condition, mm -hmm. or you impose displacement monotonicity condition. Without that, uh, I don't know if you have uniqueness. Thank you.
Okay, so what uh, mean field gamma is uh, about is uh, I gave you a description for n fix, which means that uh, each one of these solutions depend uh, on n. And uh, I am going to ask uh, two questions, issue to address. when n goes to infinity. So first of all, I want to know this is uh, in uh, Rd cross Rd n time. I want to know what it means. Means what? So I want to give a meaning to the limit when n goes to infinity of Rd cross Rd to the n. Once I give a meaning to that, second question, I want to know if I can say something about uh, the limit when n goes to plus infinity of I e n exists and satisfy what? So let me try to answer the first question. And in the second case, only when epsilon is uh, greater than 0, and you impose some severe condition on f uh, and uh, g, that you know that uh, the limiting, you can describe uh, the equation satisfied by the limiting solution. So let us describe uh, the first uh, attempt. to question one. So this is uh, what something which is uh, a trick which is uh, well uh, often used is uh, I can identify S1, Sn. I can identify that with the sum i from 1 to n. The characteristic function of uh, i minus 1 i over n s i. So there is a one-to-one -one identification between this vector and uh, this function. And uh, if I call this uh, mx, I if I call this ms, I can impose that uh, this is in uh, L2. Because of the following fact, if I compute the L2 norm, mx, the L2 norm in uh, 0, 1, rd, what I get is uh, 1 over n, the sum i from 1 to n, si square, which is uh, the norm of x, n norm, divided by n. And so this is a good scaling because uh, assume I am on a torus, this behavior like a constant, bounded by a constant, and I add up n constant, I divide by n, when n go to infinity, I have something which is bounded. Therefore, I have uh, seen that uh, I can describe Let H be the Hilbert space L2 of uh, 0, 1 Rd. I've seen that uh, Rd, Nd, is a subset of H where the inclusion is consistent with the norm on the two sets. And so I can let uh, N go to infinity 
and uh, conclude that the limits when n go to plus infinity of uh, R n d equal to h. Okay. So thing like that are done uh, in a long time ago in a numerical analysis or approximation of uh, arbitrary function by step function. However, this uh, has uh, a very serious problem. This set, if you take bounded subsets, you have no hope for compactness. Right? You, you know that the so this set uh, lack of compactness. And uh, if you try to study the limit uh, when n go to infinity of uh, this thing, what is going to save you is uh, that uh, these expressions are permutation invariant. If they are not permutation invariant, if I replace uh, f by fn, it will be very difficult, probably impossible, to study the limit of uh, such equation. Now, let, uh, let Pn be the set of permutation. of n letters. So instead of studying uh, the limit of this, I am going to consider we study the limit when n goes to infinity of uh, r n d divided by p n. So I am going to quotient the r d cross r d by the set of permutation. But uh, this space r n d quotiented by the set of permutation, this is uh, nothing but 1 over n, the sum i from 1 to n, delta si, where s1, si, where s1, sn are in rd. So, if I am working with uh, a quotient space, I better work with a quotient distance. So the quotient distance between x and y, so I am going to write it uh, 1 over n sum i from 1 to n, delta si, 1 over n sum i from 1 to n, delta yi. I have uh, no choice. It is, uh, I am going to take the usual distance, si minus uh, y tau i, where tau is a permutation. I am going to average so that uh, if this behave as a constant, the sum behave at n time a constant, i from 1 to n. And I'm going to minimize over the set of permutation of uh, n letters. So let me put the square here. This is uh, what is known as the Wasserstein distance between these two measures. Next, I can uh, 
chose to define the Wasserstein distance for general measure using what has been done uh, for the last uh, 20 years in the literature. But uh, I prefer going back to a definition what the probabilis probabilists were doing uh, uh, over 50 years ago when they were defining the Wasserstein distance without giving this the name to it. So the limit when n goes to infinity are nd divided by the set of probability is uh, the set of permutation is the set of probability of finite moment. So take this. In fact, uh, you can, I mean, it is easy to show that uh, every measure can be approximated by average of Dirac masses. It will make your finite second moment. So let us compare what we have uh, at hand. I have uh, here H, the Hilbert space, and I have uh, P2 of RD. And I would like to list uh, some uh, good property each one of them have and some annoying property each one of them have. So let us start with a good one. This is a flat space. Therefore, you don't know, need to know any geometry to be able to compute uh, the gradient. You can define the gradient, the action, and uh, so on. This has good compactness. So for instance, if I take uh, the set uh, of uh, mu probability measure on RD, such that uh, the support of mu is in a ball, then this set is uh, compact, a closed ball, then this set is compact for the Wasserstein metric. Whereas uh, if you look at the analog here, this set, uh, the analog is not compact. So gradient are easier, and Hessian are easier. Now let us look at the bad property, lack of compactness. annoying gradient. And uh, annoying tangent space. So I haven't, I haven't defined what the tangent space is. I haven't defined what the gradient is. But uh, I am going to define them later. And, uh, we will see. Um. Say it again. Yes. Yes. So here is uh, how you should think about uh, this uh, thing. When you look at uh, H, and you look at the set of probability measure, this corresponds to, if you are familiar with uh, um, fluid mechanic dynamical system, this corresponds to Lagrangian coordinate. And this corresponds to Eulerian coordinates. So there are things which are much easier to do here, harder there, and vice versa. So let me give you an example without uh, going through detail. 
you write the Hamilton Jacobi equation here, and you want to check if uh, you have a unique solution. Difficult to check if you have a unique solution. You leave the equation here, and you show that uh, you have a unique solution there. Then you check that the concept of solution on both faces are equivalent, and so you conclude that you have unique, a unique solution there. So it took some energy to several people to try to prove uh, uniqueness here because uh, some of the property which were used uh, in the Hilbert setting were not going through. But uh, once you realize that uh, you can leave, go from the quotient space to the full uh, to the Hilbert space uh, and uh, do computation, it makes your life uh, easier. So at least. Uh, you localize where the difficulty is. So the difficulty is uh, to prove that uh, the concept of gradient here and there are equivalent. So there is a concept of gradient which I have not defined yet, introduced by Ambros Ambrosio Gigli and Savari in, uh, in the optimal transport theory. And there is a concept uh, of uh, gradient which Leon define, so he took a function here, leave the function there, and define the gradient. And so the work is to show that uh, both definitions are equivalent. And once you do that, uh, it simplifies your life. So let us talk about uh, gradient. So you get the distribution of uh, all the particles together. Yeah. You have to worry about Lagrangian coordinates and projecting or something, or characteristic. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of the added difficulty that uh, the characteristic. If you tr try to go from one uh, one set to another set, uh, these characteristics are. It is not clear. You can make it better. Uh, uh, this is, if you prove some uh, regularity result, you can go from the Eulerian to the, and define the characteristic. But this is something which uh, make uh, the yeah, study. Or like that, you know? Yes. The means don't blow up, it becomes zero or something. Yes. Which is true, I guess. It is true in uh, some cases, yes. We, So I think it will take uh, it will take more than uh, ten, ten more than ten minutes to define both a gradient. Right. So you write that. Yes. And then we start at uh, ten thirty-five. Uh, okay. Thank you.